Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor. I'm a Sony Global Imaging Ambassador, and I'd like to take the opportunity to talk to you about DMF or Direct Manual Focus. Uh, this focus mode is an incredibly useful tool when we're trying to get critical focus, usually when we're using a wide aperture and we're close to our subject. So this is ideal for macro work or when using telephoto lens at close proximity to our subjects. Okay, so let's uh, take a look. Now I've set this uh, camera up into the wide AF area and I've got this subject that I'm very close to. Now typically what will happen when using a wide AF area, it'll choose uh, part of the subject that it's closest to the camera and that is not always the um, the focus point that we actually want to achieve okay so um so uh, an alternative would in this uh, instance would perhaps be to hit the uh, the FN button and then move the focus area to one of the spot options and then use the multi selector or joystick to position that spot AF over the eye and then take the picture uh, DMF offers an alternative workflow, however. So, and sometimes this alternative workflow may be faster, so it's definitely something worth exploring. I'll return the AF area to wide to demonstrate this. Again, it uh, tackles the uh, thing that is closest to the subject. Now I'm going to press the AEL button, which I programmed for my DMF option, and also magnify view. This allows me to get critical focus of that eye and take the picture very quickly. And in some instances, that is actually quicker than switching focus area and moving the focus point. Okay, so just uh, let's take a look at, uh, again, why I would be using DMF. Now, in this instance, it's great for macro work. Uh, what will often happen with macro is, again, it'll choose something that is close to the camera if we're in a wide AF area. And in this instance, it would be the leading wing of this butterfly. So just quickly going into DMF allows me to push the focus further back and then take the picture quite quickly. Uh, again, with this frog, this in this instance, I'm using a telephoto lens instead of a, a macro lens. And it just allows me to push the focus a little bit further back than the front of the nose here so I can get the eyes critically sharp and again another example I'm very close to the nose of this kangaroo so quickly entering DMF pushing the focus back to the eyes and taking the picture and it can be very quick just to reiterate, useful for macro and wide aperture work. It's also useful in some instances, I showed a monkey there. Uh, with a human, I could use IAF, um, but in some instances when uh, IAF doesn't, um, uh, isn't going to be your friend, DMF is your fallback position, plan B. So let's take a look at where we can access um, DMF. We can access it um, uh, in the AF1 uh, menu on the recent model Alpha cameras. Um, and we just basically switch um, from the AFC or AFS into DMF. Now this is quite um, a slow way of uh, accessing DMF. So you might want a quicker route rather than pressing the menu button and cycling through the menus. So most people will have it as an option or the focus mode as an option in the FN menu. Usually by default, it's on the top row. So this will give you slightly quicker access to DMF. Now, uh, I will actually want to access it even faster than that. So I'm going to show you um, how I've set that up. Now, I'll not only be using DMF as that single option, I'll also uh, be linking it to Focus Magnifier. And that's what you saw in the movie there. Uh, not only does it enter DMF, this is a manual override to the focus, autofocus, but it also magnifies the view so I can find critical focus in manual focus. Okay, so let's go into the Focus Assist menu. Okay, so I'm on page 13 of this particular camera of the first camera menu there. Now, Focus Magnifier, um, you're not going to go into this menu option. It's basically just going to give you the option to go in or not. Um, typically, some photographers will assign Focus Magnifier to a custom button, um, especially uh, people who are using manual focus a lot. Uh, I'm going to turn my attention to the, um, the Focus Magnifier options below this one. Uh, focus Magnifier Time. 
Now I've typically set it for five seconds. Now if you set a two second or five second, don't we be worried that you can't find a critical focus in that short period of time? Because the two or five seconds actually means the two or five seconds after you've finished turning the focus ring and then it'll go back to the zoomed out view. If you set it to no limit, however, um, you may uh, have trouble framing your image uh, in the magnified view. So I would set perhaps one of those shorter uh, times there. Um, initial focus magnification. With focus magnifier, you can press um, the button that you've assigned to focus magnify again to zoom in to 6.2 uh, and then press it again to zoom in even further. I don't like that uh, stepped approach, um, so I'm just going to go straight into the magnified view. Okay, so that is a 6.2 option there. Now, autofocus in uh, focus magnifier, I'm going to switch off. Okay, I am going to be using the manual focus override to the autofocus when I'm in that magnified view. So that one needs to come off. Uh, MF assist. Um, this uh, basically means that as soon as you turn the focus ring in DMF, it's going to magnify in. And that's what you saw in the movie. So that one needs to be switched on. Peaking setting. This is an option. Now I didn't have it um, um, uh, switched on in that movie you're watching, but if you're struggling to find critical focus, then maybe the peaking is going to give you a little bit more of assistance there. Now, because you're in magnified view, not only do you want to switch this on, but you also probably want to switch the peaking level from low to either medium or high, um, because it does tend to reduce in effect in magnified view. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I can instantly get the DMF uh, quick access with a single custom button press. And that also goes into that magnify view with all of those settings that I've just been outlining there. OK, so the way I'm going to assign a custom button for this is I'm first coming over to that first camera menu. Um, now, you're going to find this only on the latest model Sony Alphas, such as the a7 III, the a7R III, the A9 cameras, and every camera that is subsequently released will probably have this feature as well. We're looking for the register custom shoot settings, and we're going to go into this menu option. Now, you've got um, three places is you can assign this. Now typically I've set my memory on the shoot mode dial 1 for my portrait or shallow depth of field uh, memory settings. So I'm going to assign it, this one to the custom hold 1 just so that uh, I'm uh, not confused about um, memory 1 goes to register custom hold 1. Then they're not actually assigned to the memory feature. We're going to set up a custom button uh, to access this. OK, so when you come into this, you'll find uh, various options that you can pre-program. Now, this uh, initially doesn't have a memory. It doesn't know what settings you've got. Um, so you're going to have to set them up uh, from scratch. Uh, what I would encourage you to do is to only use those options that you actually need for DMF. So you can actually just uh, cycle left uh, using the wheel on the back of the camera and start um, using the center button uh, deregistering these options. So basically it's not going to overwrite what you've currently got set in the camera. And you're going to start uh, going down and taking off those ticks for each of those options until we get to focus mode and the focus mode we're going to go in and set to DMF we're going to set the focus area now this uh, you may want a, a zone or a center but I'm going to set that to um, wide again this will quickly access the basic subject uh, and then I'm going to fine tune with DMF now, this is an important option. You want AF on. You don't want to be half pressing the shutter release and pressing the AEL button at the same time. Um, you can do that, but um, this uh, op uh, option of switching AF on is going to give you a little bit more flexibility in that you can quickly come out of that magnify view with a half press, which you can't actually do if you're holding focus. 
Okay, so those are the three settings that I would now like you to register. So don't forget to register because they will not be remembered unless you register them. Now we, we're going to have to um, set up a custom button to recall those registered custom shoot settings. So this is a two step process. So we need to come over to the second camera menu come down to custom key, uh, enter that, and then come over to the third page of those custom keys. Now I like to set the AEL button because it's very close to my thumb. Uh, so it's very easy to access that uh, very, very quickly. Okay, so we're going to um, uh, select that rec uh, recall custom hold one. Now you're going to have to hunt for this. Um, it's, uh, there's a lot of options to um, set to a custom button these days. Now I'm finding it on page two of 23, and that's where I can set that to recall custom hold one. Uh, incredibly useful feature, these recall custom holds. I always think that um, my memory settings are my go-to settings, but I always have a plan B uh, to fall back on if those uh, settings uh, are not working for a particular subject, and DMF is one of those instances. Um, that basically uh, sums up um, how I'm using um, the AEL button. Depressing, as soon as I want to go into DMF, I'll typically be in aperture priority, but that allows me to quickly enter DMF. As soon as I, um, I start, um, it will automatically focus as well because I've assigned that to the AEL button. And then as soon as I turn the focus ring, it's going to zoom in. I'll get critical focus. I'll half press the shutter release to come out of the magnified view so I can then frame the image and then press the shutter release to take the image. Now, it does sound like quite a lot, but you'll quickly uh, be able to master this and do this in just a couple of seconds. And it will become uh, probably one of your favorite um, uh, custom settings that you're going to be using on your alpha camera. So I would encourage you to give it a go. Okay, so I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Global Imaging Ambassador.